sticky fun for everyone. Sold set. Leonardo, the Katana Blade. My cut. Attack the evil and humanoid, forcing him back into the earth. Hey, the name's Boglet. You sold separately. <laughs> We battle our human and Skeletor each so separately. You put the mountain together. Turn them into the light, and they change into even more powerful. Battle against Lion-O and the new Thundercat ally. Welcome back to That New Toy Smell, episode 4 of 2020. And today we're going to be taking a look at Masters of the Universe Reaction, part 2. And part 1 uh, was edited by Gamer here, uh, but part 2 I edited myself. Now part 1, uh, we, we thought we'd cut it in half, so that you would do the first half and I would do the second half. Uh, but your first half came out to a little over 5 minutes, and my second half is about 11 minutes. So, you know, uh, who's willing to do a little more work around here would be this guy. Two thumbs at this guy. <laughs> um, so, let's take a look at that video, and then when we come back, we've got some questions and comments about last week's episode, and uh, some questions for Gamer here. Since you're new to the show, there's some things people want to know about you. You're just not going to talk now, are you? You going to play this game? Jumping to 2018, Wave 4 was revealed at New York Toy Fair featuring Orko, Scareglow, Faker, Ram Man, Mechanic, Evil Lynn, and were pictured in promotional material along with Battle Damaged Battle Armor He-Man and Skeletor. For the first time, action features appeared in the line with Scareglow getting his glowing ability, I mean that was easy enough, and Mechanek getting an extendable neck. Ooh. Orko also stands out as they gave him articulated legs even though he's in a robe. Weird. The battle damage figures would get released early at WonderCon, while the rest would wait until summer for a full retail release. Over in Germany, Die Welt Door Meister Magazine would team up with Space to release this German exclusive Anti Eternia He Man. Now, I love me some redecos, and Anti Eternia He Man was the last classics figure I ever bought, but finding out that this was a German exclusive really started to sour me on the line. In the early days, scalpers were putting these on eBay for $80. And while the price has now dropped to around $40, $45 for this figure, that's just way too much. I'd like to just buy one, please? Why do we have to jump through all these hoops? Even though it would get a later release, it was still something at the time that really annoyed me. San Diego Comic Con 2018 got the release of She-Ra and Hordak in the two-pack. Hordak was rocking his animated series color scheme while She-Ra... Wait, what? What the... Why is she holding the hand guard on the hilt instead of the handle? Who did... What? I... Oh my goodness. I just... I can't. I can't. I can't. Enough. I, I can't. No. Unboxing ToyCon in Mexico got these exclusive recolored figures. Now, I don't know if they have actual production names, and I don't speak Spanish, so, you know, maybe they're out there. But I like calling these the Starburst Variants. Now, this recoloring is fun, and I'd like eventually to get this Sour Apple Skeletor, but I think I can live without Blueberry Merman. PowerCon 2018 got what seems to be the weirdest redeco set. We got Snake Tila, Camo Cobra Khan, Mini Comic Beast Man, the English version of Anti Eternia He Man that still sells for 40 bucks in 2020, and Stratos, Stratos, and Stratos. Why? Well, sometimes Stratos is blue and red, and sometimes he's red and blue, and sometimes, well, 
He just wants to fly around in his underwear. Is that too much to ask for? 2019 saw Super 7 jump into the blind box chaos with two series featuring heroic or evil warriors. I refuse, refuse to buy blind box or blind bagged anything anymore. But luckily, my favorite toy store down in St. Louis, Saga Toys, plug, plug, opened cases of these and sold them at regular retail price, but exposed so you knew exactly what you were getting. My He-Man, Man-in-Arms with Mustache, Skeletor, Merman, and Trapjaw all came from this store and their decision not to keep them blind boxed. And I'm glad they did because I might have never given the line a second look if they hadn't. It's one thing to see them in the package, but it's another thing to see them open and out and available to be picked up and moved and played with and pick out exactly the one you want. And to me, that made all the difference. Once I actually saw them and could play with them, then I started to get more interested in this line. And it really made me start to collect them. And it made me go back and probably spend more money than I probably should have picking up some of the others. So, thanks Saga Toys! Super 7 decided to call this next wave release the Variable Variant series, which consisted of redecoed versions of previously released figures, all based on appearances in various pieces of Masters of the Universe lore. Plus, they showed Stinkor in the promo materials, but he wasn't actually in this release. They just wanted to tease you, to tempt you, with Stinkor? Anyway, Hordak had his original action figure black colors. Merman was in his animated scheme, as sold previously with the overpriced carrying case. Man-at-Arms is supposed to be in his Masters of the Universe movie suit colors, even though he's not actually in the movie suit. Ram-Man is in his mini comics colors, and Tila? Well, people call her Shiva Tila because her colors invoke the Hindu goddess of Shiva, but she seems to be based off this custom figure of a faker-esque Tila named Thalsa, made by Metal Logan. There was also a Slime Pit version of He-Man released, though it was on a completely original card, and Super 7 treats it as though it's not actually part of this series, even though it was released at the same time. And finally, Wave 5 came along with a She-Ra inspired selection of Horde characters, featuring Mantena, Grizzlor, Shadow Weaver, and two versions of Modulok, each with a different head as seen in the original Build Your Own Assortment. Now this wave didn't get as much attention, probably due to the terrible feedback of the new She-Ra animated series that it deserves, but Modulok is still one of my favorite characters. I just wish they had found a way to mix and match some of the pieces on him, or even make the head a swappable piece and include both in one package. It just seems like it could have been easy enough with a character like Modulok to have some sort of piece, maybe arms or legs or something that you could snap off or snap on or pull off or pull on or somehow swap and trade. I mean, that was the gimmick of the figure. And I know action features are not a huge part of this line, but it just seems like the type of thing they should have figured out how to do with this. Maybe it would have gotten this wave a lot more of attention. And for the right reasons this time. 2019 also saw Super 7 acknowledge the color differences from India with the Leo Toys wave. Skeletor, Faker, and Beastman from this line have all been much sought after collector's pieces for years, so the addition of these colors was something fans responded to very positively. Along with these, Super 7 also released another Beastman with the weapons pack. This Beastman sports the colors of the classic weapons pack armor. Oh, and it was at this time that they finally released Stinkor. And no, he didn't stink. He actually came scented with that new toy smell. PowerCon 2019 got some new exclusives, including Grizzlor and Mantena in their toy-accurate colors, 
and a new version of Modulok, with two heads and four legs, looking more like one of those monstrous creations you would have made with the original toys back in the day. This paved the way for New York Comic Con to bring out their own version of Grizzlor, a dark version, plus a new version of Modulok based off the Top Toys colors from Argentina, and then finally another version of the two-headed, four-legged Modulok, but this one with the cartoon accurate colors. Super 7 celebrated the seven days of Christmas with five figure. wait. The math doesn't work, but but trust me, they were celebrating something having to do with Christmas here. They released five figures with translucent colors, including Scareglow, Merman, Skeletor, Orko, and Anti-Eternia He-Man. And while these were neat, most people wondered why they were these translucent colors. They looked more like Crystar figures than Masters of the Universe, but, I mean, hey... It's another variant to add to your collection. And just before the doors finally closed on 2019, Super 7 sent out an email saying that their final releases for the Reaction Line would also be the final releases for their involvement in the Masters of the Universe line completely. And those would be these packs featuring He-Man and Battle Cat and Skeletor and Panthor. Battle Cat came armored and Panthor came fully flocked. And in case you were wondering how the figures were actually going to sit on top of these animals, well, they didn't. There were holes cut inside the cats, allowing the legs to fit down inside, because that's the only way you're going to get them to work with these reaction figures. And while it was nice to see these figures, I mean, they did look nice, the flocking was nice, and it was great to finally have Battle Cat and Panthor, it was still sad to see the reaction line come to an end, but also Super 7's involvement with the Masters of the Universe line come to an end, as Mattel would take back the license as they begin to push for a new era in Masters of the Universe toys. All right, welcome back to the show. I've been joined by Abraham Lincoln now. Mm. And, uh, are you going to smile at all this week? Hmm. All right, then. So, Gamer and I, um, we hope you enjoyed these videos, this look back. One thing I did want to point out, um, and, and some people have wondered, what's a good playset for these reaction figures? Um, and what I found was actually this guy, which you saw in the video. Uh, this is the Tim Me Battle Mountain Scenery. Uh, Tim Me is a company that makes a lot of uh, like little army men. So they do army men, I think some dinosaurs and frontiersmen and whatever. Uh, but they make those little plastic guys. And so this is actually supposed to be part of that. Uh, but I thought this was an excellent you know, just Masters of the Universe representation. And in fact, uh, if, if I were to spray paint this green, it would have a nice Castle Grayskull effect, um, which yes, there is one right back there. Um, so to spray paint it green and do some um, dry brushing with some uh, highlights on there would make it into a nice Castle Grayskull. And in fact, maybe even put a, a jaw bridge on here and maybe sculpt some eyes you know, whatever. Uh, it might be a pretty easy conversion to make one of these into a little reaction Castle Grayskull. Question, yes. uh -huh. why is Castle Grayskull not gray? Why is it green? All right, so moving on. Uh, <laughs> there's just some things you, you can't answer. Um, okay, so, oh, and by the way, they're available on uh, Amazon. It's Tim Me, T-I-M-M-E-E, -E, all one word, and I'll put a link to it uh, down below in the description. And by the way, when I put a link to Amazon, that's just to help you to find the product. I'm not um, monetizing that. That's not an affiliate link. Uh, I'm not getting a nickel every time you click on it, take a look at it or anything like that. I'm not monetizing you guys. It's just so you could buy it too. All right, uh, first up, uh, Willis Wheeler says uh, from our last episode, your son did a great job. No, I didn't. So he's calling you a liar, Willis. Uh, second, Mr. Brightside, 
I know I was young when I started watching you guys. I'm glad to see you're back to this, this podcast. I'd love to hear one day what happened to the gang. To make a long story short, Dan and Duvall knew each other for a long time, and when two friends know each other for a long time, they start to fight a lot. That led to a lot of the initial breakup stuff. Dan kind of got burned out by the whole thing and one day kind of left. Um, and everything sort of fell apart as people got married and had kids and all of that kind of stuff. So the more uh, people built their families, the less time they had to do videos and that's basically what a lot of it came down to. Um, and then, you know, uh, those two just fought a lot until that fell apart. So. That's sorry for ruining this. That's the basic. Oh no, you're fine right now. But just like in a year or so, we won't be friends anymore. All right, cool. I'm just letting you know. Yes, yes. All right. Um, let's see. My cousin Ted. Uh, let's see. He says, "Great job, 40G." Some of our figures had no articulation and could knock you out if accidentally dropped on your head. Also, sometimes those same figures were found under the Christmas tree in a reused jeans box. That is true. Uh, one thing that at Christmas time, we used to go down to Grandma and Grandpa's house. So there'd be our family and then uh, Ted and Wendy and Uncle Steve and Aunt Sherry, their family would be down there, and then Aunt Jeannie and that Uncle Steve. Who are Christy. these people? Yeah, most of them have grown up, moved on, and you haven't met a lot of them. Oh, well, Uncle Steve passed away. But um, anyway, we would all go down to Grandma and Grandpa Wilson's house, and we would do a big Christmas down there. So there'd be presents for everybody down there. And one thing the adults love to do to the little children is they would keep the boxes when they would go to like Sears and buy clothes. Back in those days, if you bought a pair of jeans, they would put it in a box with some tissue paper and send it home with you instead of just throwing it into a bag because that's how things were done from the 50s to the 80s. Uh, but whatever, anyway. Um, so they would take those clothes boxes mm -hmm. and then they would put the toy inside but then wrap it up so when you opened it, you thought you were getting jeans. Or you thought you were getting a sweater. Or you thought you were getting a blanket. Yeah, jeans. Oh, a toy. I just noticed you're out of focus and I'm in focus, so... Things to be you. There you go. Now you're kind of in focus. Just... There you go. We can do oh, a show like this. Now you've broken the camera. Okay, good job. And there's Libby coming in the door. Why are you coming in the door now? Okay, quick edit, and we are back, and Writer Origin says, I love these figures, man, and I think it's because of their collectible size. I was never a fan of the three and three quarter inch scale, but these changed my mind. I have a nice small collection of the vintage and classics figures, but these just really call out to me. I can store all of mine in a compact pencil case, too. Something that can't be said about the other lines. Still looking forward to the Origins line, but your son did a good job, by the way. Hate to say it, but you're kind of right about having us in the palm of your hands when it comes to Masters of the Universe. Which is why we chose it. No, um, I, I know there's just a whole lot of Masters of the Universe fans out there. And one of the reasons why I did the worst Masters of the Universe figures uh, video is because I knew it would get feedback. And I knew it would get people talking and it would get, you know, attention and people, uh, you know, going like, oh my gosh, what are they, who, you know, who's saying the worst? Let's, and... You know, once you do that and it gets people in and, and you know, talking and involved, uh, then they tend to stick around. So, um, but one of the videos we will be uh, doing soon are the best uh, characters. So, it may be a figure from the classics line, it could be a figure from the vintage line, it could be a figure from, you know, whatever. Uh, but we're going to be taking a look at the best across all of them. Uh, so that's something that you guys can submit feedback on. We're going to be putting a post up in the um, official Pop Culture Network group on Facebook. So if you want to join that group, uh, it's tinyurl.com slash pcngroup, just like the link says here on the screen that I'm putting in right there. Whoa, right. it's Whoa. there. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, we'll also have a link in the description down below. Now, um, what? If can we get the terrorist figure to number one? <laughs> no. Come on. The <laughs> blast attack will not be number one. Um, but I bet if I opened up, opened it up to a full vote, it would be uh, probably the classics. He-Man would be like the number one. 
Well, yeah, yeah, but I'm younger and also cooler, so if I say, hey, let's give this a number one, it will. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a poll up there for feedback that will be taken into consideration, but it won't just be based on the poll. So the poll will have some weight, but my own opinion will have some weight. I'll let you have a little bit of input too. You can look at some and be like, oh, that guy looks cool, that guy looks dumb. You know, that type of stuff, and we'll we'll go from there. I have a very strict rating system, uh, cool and dumb. Makes sense. All right. Anthony, whose last name I am totally going to butcher. Sabulars? Sab Sabularsi? That's a good bad guy name. Uh, he says the video was good. Do a Rotar versus Beyblade battle. Beyblade. I'd have to get a Rotar. I don't own a Rotar though. That's the thing. We do. Do we still have Beyblades? They, last time I saw them, we shoved them in a closet or door drawer. So I think those are Draco spins, which no. are the same difference. But no, they're Beyblades. They're Beyblades. Yeah. All right. Well, we have the big green one that's like this tall. That's supposed to be really hmm. like a tornado. Did you not watch the Beyblade anime? I never watched the anime. I, I only played with the toys while you were playing with the toys. Mm -hmm. All right, Steven Brick AFOL. I'm into this line from afar. Never bought any because I'm so deeply invested in the Classics line and 5.5 inch Super 7 line, etc. But hey, they each their own. People enjoying the scale might enjoy, the, enjoy them more than I would in my book. Um, but the more different Master of the Universe lines out there, the better. Uh, well, yeah, I, I give you the fact that Prince Adam wasn't the best at hiding his true identity. This was a fun video. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, but that's another thing that's that's great to point out is that um, there are so many different Masters of the Universe lines. I like the reaction line because I like three and three quarter inch uh, figures. I also like um, the five uh, five 5.5 inch figures. Now, the Origins ones, part of the reason why I like the reactions is they're, they're cheaper. Uh, cheap is a nice... Uh, bonus for me. Um, the the I think it's the origins, right? The origins are the the highly articulated 5.5. Those. Oh, I thought I had that on silent, and I did not. I apologize for that. Um, but but here's the thing. I. I like I, I like the look of, of some of those figures, but I just can't justify paying thirty to thirty-five dollars for a single figure. Like it's really hard to make that justification. It's only like five inches tall, right? Figure five and a half. Like you, you're the um, like these guys, like these. Yeah. 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 Um, the uh, th those ones, they're gonna do these highly articulated ones that you know have. Uh, replaceable hands and replaceable feet okay. and different stuff that you can you know, pop on and off. And they, they, their joints are made so they can move in all different directions. Okay. Uh, and they're going to be like 30 bucks or 35 bucks, something like that. At least, well, I think so. At least that was the plan. Did, did the price come down? I don't know. Um, but that's part of the thing. That's one reason why I never got into classics and I never liked classics was because they were so expensive. I wanted a cheaper line of figures. Like, I'm I, I, the collectible lines are nice if you're just buying one or two, but I saw so many people who wanted to support the entire line, people who were huge fans of the line, basically going to debt, maxing out credit cards, always subscribing to the line every year. You know, you have to get in that subscription before the deadline, so you get every figure, you know, and they're paying hundreds of dollars every year, and they just couldn't afford it, but they were desperately trying to figure out how, um, because you know the figures were so expensive I would cherry pick some of the good ones and I might hunt some other ones down but for the most part I just wouldn't pay that much you know I bought a handful of them especially when they went to big lots and they were like 10 bucks it's like oh well yeah definitely I'll buy them for 10 bucks but um, 30 dollars there were only a few I was willing to pay full price on uh, like four or five that I bought. One of them being the Spirit of Hordak, which I turned around and sold at regular face value to a viewer of this show uh, several years ago. So, um, that bit of life advice. Mode's third fire TV stick. Okay, thank you. Bit of advice, if you had to go into debt to buy action figures, you should probably not do that because that money would be better spent elsewhere. Like. Food. No. Uh, I mean, we are talking about toys. Well, 
I mean, toys? toys are ex toys are a very important part of life. I mean, can that's just how it is. Can you eat them though? Uh, well, you can. Oh, great! I mean, I wouldn't recommend it, but it's possible. I, you might not be able to digest them very well. You won't get much nutrition out of them. I mean. To be fair, you can eat anything if you deep fry it enough. Alright, Gundam Warrior 1 says, Novelty items, nothing more. I bought them for the card art. Uh, for me, more Masters of the Universe, the better, except the DreamWorks fake She-Ra. So if it spreads more interest in the property, it's for the greater good. And again, that goes back to the idea, yeah, there's more. Like, hit every demographic, why not? You know, give a product for everybody. If, if it doesn't bankrupt the company and, you know, destroy the entire line. Um, but yeah, why not, if, if you can do it so, you know, like, the, one of the problems with classics is when it was classics, it was only classics. There was nothing else, right? So you couldn't get anything else. Like, the, you couldn't get more 5.5 uh, 5, uh, commemorative, you know, figures or anything like that. Those were all gone. You know, that type of stuff was over. Classics was the only line. Um, the only? It's the only type of Master of the Universe figures that were available for several years. Wow. So, if you can do various kinds, then do various kinds. Sure, yeah. Um, I think that's great. Um, and then Marvel Collector UK says, Good video, not a line I collected. Reaction, not Master of the Universe. But um, interesting to see how they look in other collectors' hands. And as you can tell in this video, there are so many different ones. They, they recolored, redecoed uh, time and time again. But again, that puts it in people's hands. Uh, they did, you know, versions based on the way uh, the figures looked in Argentina and in Mexico, and um, you know, special edition, um, like fan-made versions and stuff. They did all sorts of different weird color schemes and things like that. So it, it is, it is neat. Like if you maybe you you're not going to be able to afford, um, you know, buying in, uh, a version from India, a faker. Um, you know, with the dark eyes, but you could afford to buy uh, one of these reaction figures. It may not be the same as owning that original, but still like, oh cool, I always wanted this guy, and it's, you know, just this neat little collectible version of him, and there you go. And nowadays, recoloring action figures is seen as a cash grab and money hungry, because it kind of is. Mm, it, I mean, it is in some. It depends on how much you let that take over. Now, mm. towards the end, Super Seven really pumped out a lot of recolored ones, but they knew the line was coming to an end. Um, and so, instead of investing in a lot more sculpts that they weren't going to be able to do anything with, they did a lot of recoloring to get those collectors' versions out there. So, they did do a fair amount of that, but they had a reason for it, you mm. know. Um, but. Yeah, that happens, but but sometimes you get a really cool redeco like Disco Skeletor. And if it wasn't for Disco Skeletor, there'd be a lot less joy in this world. All right, gamer. Um, on the uh, Facebook group, mm. some people had some questions for you. Oh. One of the questions was, yeah, what's your favorite toy of all time? Um, Skylanders, because they also go to a video game. Wait, wait. Um, I would probably say the the Marvel and Star Wars like build a figure where you have you get the head, the torso, the arms, and the legs, and a bunch of like oh, yeah. like capes and weapons for them to have, and you can just mix and match mix and match anything. What are they called? Ma mashups or yeah, I think they're mashups or mix and matches. Yeah, I forgot you had a whole bunch of those yeah, we, when you were we, little. We put them in a bucket. That's right. And when they started showing up at Five Below, we got a whole lot more. Yeah. Uh, I forgot about that. Uh, okay, so here's uh, one of the other questions was, um, do you remember what the first toy was you bought with your own money? No. Can you remember your favorite toy you bought with your own money? No. I, I do think one of the first things that you bought with your own money was a Build-A-Bear. Mm. Um, and that was something, like we used to go out there when it was your birthday, Yep. you'd be able to make one on your birthday, but then... I think there was like a Pokemon one yeah. or something. Yeah, it was the Pip, the Pokemon Piplup. Uh, it's a it's a blue penguin. Okay, that spews uh, water everywhere. And so you, does the Build a Bear spew water? Uh, only if you fill it with it. I see. Um, but but I remember you you had money. Yep. And you you really wanted to get that. Um, and you were sad we found out too late to get Pikachu. No, it was the uh, Turtwig. 
dirt wig? Turt wig. What's it's a, a turtle that has a wig of grass. Oh, that's the one you really wanted? Yes, it's oh. so it's cute! And then Gravel is cool, and then Terra, Torterra is the coolest! He doesn't know what I'm talking about. Okay, fair enough. Someone um, does. But I remember one of the one of the big things that you bought with your own money, which was like a big expensive thing, was that uh, Nerf uh, modulus gun. Oh, you had it was like this giant Nerf rifle, and it had like twenty different attachment pieces you could put on it and you could take it apart and put it back together in different ways and stuff. Um, I remember you were really excited to get that. And there's also the character Mega Man. He has a like an arm blaster. And they always had one on sale at GameStop for like 80 bucks. It was up there for two years. They finally, they're finally like, you know, they're shutting down stores, everything's on sale. We go to get it, they're sold out. But they have another one that's Mega Man Zero, and this one's a red and white because it's his super form when he's super powerful. And so I went ahead and got that one. So at least you were able to get one, even yeah. though it wasn't the one you were really hoping for. Okay, um, and then if you could get any collectible, from from all time, if there was oh. one thing you wish you could have, well, what I really want is there's this Sonic statue. I don't remember where I saw it, but it was uh, it was based off Mushroom Hill Zone from Sonic Three and Knuckles. It's either Sonic and Knuckles or Sonic Three. I can't remember. Um, but basically, Sonic is flying with tails overhead. There's a robot, uh, one of the variants is that the entire place is on fire because it goes up in flames at one point. So it's like a diorama? Yeah. Nice. But it's really cool and I want it. How much is it? I remember it being like 580 bucks. Oh, okay. And then it went on sale and I don't remember seeing it since. Hmm. It went on sale for super cheap, but it was still like 100 bucks. Hmm. But still way more than you could afford. Yeah. yeah. Still way more than I can afford. Yeah. All right, so there you go. That's going to do it. Don't forget, uh, keep an eye on the Pop Culture Network group on Facebook. We'll have a poll up about Masters of the Universe figures. Um, don't forget, you can also call our 24-hour voice mail line. It's area code 217-953-4025. You can email me, dirt at popculturenetwork.com or dirt at thepopc.net. And you can follow Gamer on Twitter at... For the gamers, with the word for instead of the number, because F O U R the gamers mm -hmm. on Twitter, um, and then also uh, we'll put a link to your YouTube channel on there. Which, by the way, um, you uh, were playing the uh, uh, Minecraft Dungeons. Mm -hmm. I don't see that stream on your YouTube page. Yeah, because it was on Twitch. Oh, you did it on Twitch. Yes. Ah, oh, are you gonna download it from Twitch and put it on your YouTube? No. Do you want people to go to your Twitch? Yeah. Well, then why don't you give them your Twitch link? Okay, it's in the description, because I don't know it off the top of my head. <laughs> okay. I've used Twitch like four times, and I'm still figuring how, how stuff works. Why don't you want to put your Twitch video on YouTube? Because it just clogs the space. It doesn't clog the space. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Okay. We have different definitions of clog, then. Well, then why don't you edit it down to something that's interesting with like an intro and an outro and... I'm already working on another big video. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't forget, you can also check out Gamer over on the Video Game Loser show. We do that one every Wednesday. This is that new toy smell every Saturday. Um, he's doing some editing. I'm doing some editing. We're throwing out ideas on different stuff that we're doing together. Uh, we're working. There's a video that we really want to do mm. coming up at some point in the future about the toys to life that you've probably never heard of. Ooh. And so you're thinking Toys of Life. Well, that's Skylanders, that's Disney Infinity, that's Lego Dimensions. But there's another one that 99% of the people out there have never heard of that was really big in our house. Don't say it. Don't say the name. They're going to do a collaboration with DC to put in put how, uh, how big it was. Yeah. Um, but it was also from Mattel, the same people who did Masters of the Universe. So there you go. Um, so what we're going to do is we, we're... It's going to be big, so we're going to split it into two parts. One part will be on Video Game Losers talking about the game. Part of it will be on That New Toy Smell talking about the toys because of the Toys to Life and the game uh, thing. But that probably will be a couple weeks away because there's a whole lot that we have to get together to make that one work. So, and we want to make it as best as we can. Right. 
Um, so some other things that we're talking about um, going forward is again, if you have any ideas about toy lines that everybody seems to have forgotten, that maybe was one of your favorites when you were growing up or something like that, um, that you'd like to see someone talk about, we can do some research into that, talk about some of that stuff. Um, like Pixel Pals. They were super big for like two weeks and then went away. Are you talking about the lights? Yeah. Those aren't really toys though. Those are like they're, they're, night lights. They're still toys. Uh, you can play with them. Uh, I'm thinking of, of toy lines that, you know, with the fall of Toys R Us, a lot of those small independent toy companies or some of those smaller toy lines have just disappeared. Like Go Go's Crazy Bowl? Go Go's Crazy Bowl. The ones that come in toilets and trash cans? Oh, what were those things? I don't know. Uh, a trash pack. The trash pack. Was it? Yeah. Okay. The trash pack. Uh, they were like they were like little, almost like garbage pail kids, as figurines. But they were um, squishy. Um, so there were there was a lot of stuff like that. Um, but you know, some some of those toy lines have just dried up and disappeared, maybe never to be seen again. So uh, I'm just kind of wondering what's out there that you guys remember that you wish. Uh, you know, would get some more attention that we can take a look at that would be interesting to do a video on. So leave some ideas like that in the comments below. Send me an email, send them a message on Twitter, however you want to do that. Um, if you've got any ideas on stuff like that. Um, yeah, so any, anything else you want to add before we go? Anything else you want to plug? Anything you want to... I have to use the bathroom. Woo! Okay <laughs> then, well, we're going to wrap it up. So thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time.